Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another wonderful episode of That Sewing Blab. For all of you new to our live stream show tonight, that lovely woman there in the dark green, I believe it is, with the glasses on her head, is our host of the show, Dawn Kingelli from the, the blog Dueling Design. I'm her co-host, Myra Rentmeister, from the blog Simple Inspirations. And that beautiful woman right there in that lovely, lovely print dress we'll get to in just a moment, but I bet a lot of you already know her. So I just want to continue to say this show, we are the community-based sewing hub for all things sewing. Right here, we share interviews like the great one we're going to do tonight, as well as host, um, we have hosted challenges and events. Basically, anything related to sewing, we discuss right here. Now, if you have a question for us, we have an ask a question link down below. All you have to do is post your question there and we'll get to it before the end of the show. Now, it truly is important that you post your question there because if you post them in the comments on the right, they tend to scroll up and we don't wanna miss any of those valuable questions. So also, I wanted to let you all know that our shows can be live, can be replayed, not live streamed, replayed on Crowdcast and on YouTube. However, we do encourage you to join us for these live streams because there's just things you cannot do on a replay. Like you say, like one of those things is vote on our hosted challenges and events. Also, occasionally we give prizes to our live stream viewers. Now, if you're not here, you can't get a prize. So we truly encourage you to join us live stream and it's a lot of fun. So without further ado, I'm gonna pass it on over to the lovely Dawn so she can get our show started for tonight. Dawn, you ready? Oh, I'm ready, Myra. Thanks, Myra. Uh, she, you do a lovely job with all that kind of housekeeping stuff. You know, you make it <laughs> razzmatazz and it couldn't be, but thank you. Okay, we are so excited. We've had a bit of a British invasion. I don't know if anyone's noticed, um, we had like on our hundredth episode, we had Sharon of Kindish Behavior. She was like the first person on that night. And then we had the Stitch Sisters and now really Lauren from Guthrie and Ghani. And we are thrilled that she's joining us because again, it is entirely late for her and she's got a little one. So it is lovely that she's coming on. Yeah. When I was thinking about introducing her, there is a lot to Lauren. I mean, most of the guests that we have on the show, we ask them on because they are so multifaceted and Lauren is definitely one of these ladies, seriously. Now, some of you might've first recognized her when she was on the Great British Sewing Bee. I think I got that name right. I always like British Great Sewing Bee, Great Sewing Bee. Yeah, that <laughs> and, <right. laughs> yeah and unfortunately in United, Canada and the United States, I, I think it's very hard to watch, you know, cause I hear people groaning about it and I've been groaning about it. I think it's like a, more sophisticated project runway in that I, it seems to me from the ones I've watched, because I have sneaked a couple, um, it's focused more on technique versus, you know, flash and razzmatazz. So I yeah. am, would love to watch the rest of them. And it is fantastic that you had an opportunity to be on that show. But I mean, that's just scratching the surface. You also own a brick and mortar store, Guthrie and Ghani, um, as well as written a book, as well as goodness me, your, your videos are amazing. If you haven't checked out her YouTube channel, please do. She does fabulous videos. You can have uh, tips on getting, buying fabrics, caring for fabrics. Yeah, those washing things that you're not so sure about, she has great videos for that. Ironing fabrics, sewing for her young, gorgeous, adorable daughter. Oh my gosh, she does amazing sewing for her, but then also sewing for herself. And on the great British um sewing bee website they said that i uh, would they say your style was feminine and quaint i don't know about quaint myself i would say more feminine stylish and timeless um she's got impeccable style and you can see in everything she chooses for a store so goodness me like really author vlogger store owner like she's very multifaceted and we're thrilled that she's on tonight thank you for coming tonight Oh, um, well, thank you for having me. <laughs> so one of the first questions we always ask, because I find it so thrilling is, and I mean, there's lots of stuff about you online. And we know that you started very early, but we'd love for you to tell us about your sewing origin story, how you got started. Well, I kind of grew up around sewing because my mom was a dressmaker and she worked from home. 
she had her own business and she would make all kinds of stuff for people. So mostly bridal wear, like wedding dresses, bridesmaids dresses. But I can remember people coming round to the house with magazines and showing her a picture of something Kylie Minogue was wearing. And they would even say to her, can you make me that dress? And she would be like, yeah, sure. <laughs> so she could, she could really sew anything and make anything. So as I was growing up, there was like the sewing machines there, there was always fabrics everywhere, there was always like a a, a well-populated sewing area of the house. Um, and then I just used to like play with all of her stuff and she showed me how to sew. And so I guess I can't really remember a time when I didn't know how to sew. Um, and then just as I, as I grew up and I got older, I just um, developed more of my own sort of inspiration from it and style and um yeah so I guess that the origins of my sewing was really taught from my mum but then sort of as I've progressed throughout my life I've just sort of learned more and more just by doing things as you do um so yeah that's how it all started <laughs> that's wonderful because you know we hear very similar stories when we interview people on the show on how they got started. And it's either from family members, they have it in their blood, they started on their bribery dolls, there's always some familiarity there. But um, I have to ask you, you have so many things going on with you. I mean, a lot of things going on around you. Where do you get your inspiration? Um. I get my inspiration from seeing what, what other people are doing as well. I love being part of that online sewing community and, um, and you know, that always gives me lots of ideas. But before, before I had the shop and when I was sort of starting to really get into sewing and doing more of it, I would always want to sew things that I knew I would use or that I needed to wear or that I would, I would you know, I needed for my house or that I wanted to give as a gift. So quite a lot of the time function is an inspiration for me because I'll be like, okay, I need this kind of thing. So then I'll be like, okay, how can I make that? Or what would be a good fabric for that? Or what would be a good pattern for that? So, um, so yeah, f f just general function and how I'm going to use what I make is also an inspiration too. Oh, cool. Well, you give a lot of people um, inspiration. You truly do. And months ago, I, um, well, I'm a subscriber first off of your YouTube channel. Oh, you. and, and many, many months ago, um, you made uh, that Kelly, Kelly Anorak jacket. Yeah. And I had just made mine and I was looking to see what others did. And lo and behold, you had done one. And I think I commented about yours too, because you had underlined yours. Yeah. And yeah. I had, I hadn't, and I thought it was just absolutely gorgeous. I do plan on making another and I'm going back to your video to watch what you did with yours <laughs> because that was super cool, really super cool. But um, do you have, are you, um, you said a lot about um, where your origins come from sewing, but did you have any formal college training or anything to do with sewing? Um, no, I've not, I've not had any formal training in sewing. I just, I just, I guess I like a challenge and when you challenge yourself, <laughs> you always learn new things. So I'm just, yeah self-taught really <laughs> and wow. talking about a challenge being on the great sewing bee i mean i know that was 2013 and which is quite a while ago but i mean i've never spoken to anyone who's been on that like a reality tv show before let alone one that oh my gosh i would love to be a fly in the room for even if it was 2013 i mean is there can you say there's like things that you learn there that you still use today well yeah, I've I've been asked that question a lot over the years and so then and yeah, it was a long time ago, like I've had quite a lot of time to kind of reflect on it, but probably one of the main things it taught me is that if you quite a lot of the time you can be like scared to try something or you can think, Oh, you know, I'm not good enough or I don't think I can do that, it's just gonna be too hard for me. But it but it but it kind of sort of pushed me to do things that I hadn't sewn before. And I found that actually I could do them. And I really surprised myself. And it just gave me a lot of confidence to sew and to make other things that I hadn't done before. And that was that, you know, in terms of something that I learned, it would, I guess it would just be that, you know, you can do it. You can totally do it. And 
you just have to try you just have to be scared not to fail and that you'll always learn and yeah just go for it Myra and I always say that too like you like we start with periscope and then you get a little braver and you get a little braver and it makes you feel like you know things that you can't imagine that you could have done before now you're like yeah I could do that so like maybe at first you thought oh it's going to be scary opening my shop and what am I going to do but maybe after being on the show you felt like I was just on that I just did that that was stressful I can handle this now yeah yeah Boy, oh boy, can you handle it because you have done quite a few things, <laughs> quite a few things. Oh, my gosh. Um, now, talking about uh, the great sewing bee. Yep. Do you have any insight news? Is it coming back? Can you talk about it? I've heard well, rumors. I, well, I'm sure you guys have probably seen on Instagram really recently that they started to say that it was coming back and there was all there was these rumors it was coming back but I've heard things like that before and then one article that I read said that it hadn't been formally commissioned yet and because I don't I don't have any inside information I can just see what everyone else sees but I can maybe interpret it in a different way because you know I've got some experience of what it, what you know how it all sort of works in the background but um, because it said it hadn't been formally commissioned, I was thinking, mm, I'm not, I'm not convinced. Like I'm, I'm gonna just tame my excitement because I know that that's quite an important part of it actually going ahead. Um, but then just today, I, I saw that they were looking for contestants. So wow. I started to call for contestants to apply. Um, so that's that's made me think. Okay, maybe this could be another. This is another uh -huh. good thing. Maybe coming back again. So. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, I'm getting really excited now. <laughs> Is there any possibility that you may be on there as a judge or a contestant? No, I mean, I can say that nobody's asked. I mean, I would love to, but nobody's asked me to. So. Well, Myra and I think that they should call you. So yeah. if they're watching, call Lauren. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, they should. Coincidentally, talk about a small world the new host that's rumoured to be the host instead of Claudia actually lives about half a mile from where I live. Oh. Wow. I don't, I don't maybe, know. Maybe you can stick a sandwich <laughs> board outside your... your <laughs> yeah. Say, I just, he's like, hey, he's I would love to be a guest host. <laughs> a, yeah, a friend of a friend and my friend was like, oh yeah, this guy, he's maybe going to host it. And he, he, you know, he lives just down the road. It's like, there's no way. <laughs> of all the places <laughs> in the UK, you can live. You can live nearby. So, yeah. <laughs> um, talking about your business being, you know, in a lovely location, what caused you to open up a business? And, I mean, seeing your videos, it is a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous place. How did that spark come about? Well, um, okay, let me think about where to start. So it's quite a long story. <laughs> <laughs> and, and really okay. I, I think that it all that it all sort of starts with that I really strongly believe that in life you have to you have to you have to keep your head up and be open to possibility and opportunity and you know you could walk past a 20 pound note or a 20 dollar bill in the street and not even see it if you've not got your eyes open and actually in life you have to be you have to be open to opportunity and that's really how the chance to open the shop came to me because at the time when I decided to open it um, I was working in a completely different area so I used to be a physiotherapist and I used to work um, in clinics um, seeing patients every day but I just it wasn't my passion anymore and I wanted to use my hobby a lot more I wanted my hobby which was sewing to become my career but at that sort of same time where I was kind of coming to this realization that actually I wanted my working life to be different I wanted my lifestyle to be different and um, my husband and I um, we we owned this building and he'd actually bought it before I'd even met him um, it was the, the the property that the shop is in now and when he originally bought it he was going to develop it into apartments but that didn't work out and for various reasons which is another story 
And we kind of were at this sort of crossroads in our life where we had to do something with this building that we owned, which was just derelict and in really poor condition and it couldn't be used and it couldn't be sold because the market had changed. And I really wanted to change my job and my life. And we just sort of put these two conundrums together to be like, okay, what what can we actually get out of this that is going to benefit every you know everything and hopefully be better? Um, so then we thought, well, let's see if we can try opening a fabric shop. Like that would just be amazing. I would get to do what I love every day and I can share all of my passion for sewing with people. And we can, I can teach people how to sew and it will mean we can renovate the building. And, you know, if it doesn't work, so what? At least we'll have, we'll have renovated this building and, you know, I'll have had a good time and we can just see what happens. So we quite naively really went into this massive project of renovating the building and we had to completely strip it back. I did like a really long series on my blog, which is really far back now, um, but it is still there of all the, the process of renovating it. it took over a year. Um, and then it was during that time that, I saw the, the chance to be on the sewing bee. This thing just came up on Facebook about this new TV show. And I thought, oh, I'll just I'll just apply. Like, I'll just see what happens. At the time, I was like wearing dirty clothes all the time and painting. And I was like working on this building site, basically, and <laughs> painting this wow. project. And then this was like this little glimmer of just sewing heaven that I could get to be on the show and I could get to sew. And yeah, that was kind of how it all started. Wow. And now it's like your fifth year anniversary. Congratulations. Yes. Oh, thank Congratulations. you. Congratulations. Yeah. Now, if you, had, if you had any um, lessons that you could, that you brought away from when you were on the show, that you could share with us that were, were really impactful impactful for you? Um, certainly what I was saying before about just having the confidence to go for it and just don't be scared to try things that you think might be too hard for you. Um, uh -huh. And then I guess I'm trying to think of, of, some, of something else that's like poignant. <laughs> and you're like the rest of us there's, obviously there's a time pressure on the show to mm -hmm. sew within a certain period of time and really that's not not necessarily realistic to real life because you know you wouldn't normally sew under those time pressure conditions mm -hmm. um, but it certainly did make me realize that I could sew a lot quicker than maybe I could do before. And then you you start to kind of learn shortcuts that maybe you you got you get a bit braver to take. Like yeah. I'm trying to think of an example. I mean, I don't always pin every seam before I sew. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> that could, That's, what not, That's what notches are for. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I don't know, little things like that. I think you just you just kind of work out what shortcuts you can and can't get away with when you're sewing. <laughs> now, did it impact your business being on the show? Yeah, it, def it definitely did. I think for a number of reasons, obviously, because I was on the show and then people were looking me up and they were they were wanting to know what these where these people are they where are these contestants now like what are they doing where can I find out more about them and then they would find my website and see that I had a shop but also generally and um, here in the UK it really really boosted the, the industry and the sewing you know the, the sewing interest of people people wanted to learn how to do it or people were it, it sort of changed, started I think it's really started to change the image of it a little bit that actually you know lots of different ages of people can sew and it's not the, the, maybe the, the old-fashioned stereotype of it is, is changed and that actually it's, it's, it's better it's more interesting it's more fun now um, so I think even if I hadn't been on the show but I'd opened a shop the show would have benefited the shop but but yeah certainly because I was on the show then people you know it was easier for people to find me or know about me or you know, I was getting a lot of press in the sewing magazines and in the local newspapers and all of that kind of thing. And that you know, it's certainly helped to boost it. I was really lucky. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's truly awesome. And you've, you're also a published author, 
you have a book called Learn to Sew with Lauren. Can you yeah. tell me about how that came about? Yeah, so um, after the show had aired on TV, then um, the then they got in touch with me. Um, sorry, I'm getting... <laughs> Um, wait till I get my words right. I'm getting tired now. Um, oh, it's pretty late at night there for you, isn't it? <laughs> so the pr- the production company who produced the show, they got in touch with me and they put me, they set me up with this meeting with, um, like a, I can't think of the word now, a book agent. And so he, um, he kind of met with me and helped me sort of work out this proposal for a book idea that could then be put to lots of different publishers. Um, so then that's sort of how the how the how the book then came about that then you know a, a publisher you know decided to sort of take me on and and you know publish my book and that so that's how it sort of started but then the the deadlines for it were all really really tight it was like such an intense period of time so the filming of the show actually happened in the October before so that was in 2012, then it aired 2013, and then the shop opened right after it had aired, so then I was like running the shop, yeah. and I got this, then I got the book deal, and I had to write it by the November, I had to write the whole book and do all of the instructions and the patterns and the samples and photograph it all and everything. So they they helped me with they they did the they did the photography and stuff, but like all of the all the things that I had to make for it, I had to make that myself, I had to design them all, I had to do all of that stuff all at the same time with like having a brand new business and trying to wow. <laughs> I was like workshops and working out how to run a shop. Like I'd never run a shop before and I was just really making it up as well. Um, long. Um, so yeah, it was like really intense time, but yeah, I got through it in the end. <laughs> yeah, you're really not afraid of a challenge. I mean, that and having a young child of now, I imagine it's just as crazy now as it was then. <laughs> yeah, speaking of, how do you manage? How do you balance your time? I drank a lot of coffee. <laughs> Stayed up late. Kind of lost my social life. <laughs> Wow. I didn't have any days off. Didn't have any holidays. Oh my. One of our live viewers, Samina, says, You make the hectic work schedule work, Lauren. And it's true. You do a fabulous job. I mean, everything you do, it's uh, brilliantly um, packaged and great content. Like, it, yeah, you wouldn't know that you were run off your feet at all. <laughs> well, so someone once told me that if you want something done, then you should ask a busy person and they're more likely to be. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's kind of how I feel. I feel. I do feel busy a lot of the time, but yeah, I I can usually just fit things in. <laughs> wow. Oh my goodness. So with your store's fifth anniversary, like I think today, especially with brick and mortar stores, it's quite a challenge. I mean, there's so many uh, like online kind of stores, not threatening, but competing with um, brick and mortar stores. But I mean, you just have to look at the, the photos of your store. It looks like some place you'd love to like hang out in for a couple hours. Yeah. Um, I was wondering if, you know, what do you think you can attribute your success to? Like five years is quite a bit for a brick and mortar store. Um, c- certainly the online part of my business, con- you know, is, is a really strong, important part. And I couldn't really have one and not the other. Like I, I think the two come together really well and that that really makes a difference. And I've worked really hard to get the two amalgamated and and work because they they really are like two separate businesses. They have, they each have their own challenges and they have to be run in slightly different ways, but at the same time they're they're completely linked together. And it's been, you know, it's taken me five years to try and get, get the two in sync and working well together. So there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff that happens that 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 makes it a success basically in terms of how we organize everything. Um but I guess I've just I've always tried to be myself and what when I run the business and 
and I almost like see the shop kind of like my own massive fabric stash of all of the fabrics that I love and you know I I I have help with it now but I still I still buy all the fabrics for the shop and I still love every single one and I just try and keep it authentic to me and I try to I don't think you can ever please everyone or sort of cater to everyone's taste you have to find you have to sort of find your find your own tribe and I think I just so I just try to be true to myself and I try to be genuine and authentic and share what I'm truly passionate about and what I really love and hope that that resonates with people who feel the same as me um, and yeah that's what keep that's what keeps it enjoyable for me as well which is really important because running your own business as a lifestyle is not a job as a, as a lifestyle. Yeah. <laughs> well, the success of your five years in business shows that you've hit your niche for sure. Definitely. Oh, now, um, with all that going on, how much do you get to sew for yourself? Or well, do you? well, yeah, I do. Um, because part part of running the business is being able to sew and that's really important to me so I just have to um work things around that I do get time to sew and um, so I have I have a team that help me run the shop and they help me run the shop and they help me do things that mean that I do have time to sew mm -hmm. because that's just such an important part of why I have the business and why I love it so much. And I think if I didn't have that time to sew and improve my skills and try new things, then it just wouldn't be the same for me. And I don't, yeah, that's just such an important part of it. Um, it, ha it has kind of posed another challenge once I had a baby because, you know, life completely changes when you have a baby. <laughs> Um, and I sew a lot in the evening now. I spend a lot of, that's, what, that's probably when I do most of my sewing now is in the evening. Um, but yes, and the short answer to the question is I do still sew <laughs> quite a lot. <laughs> oh, that's okay. I do see some of the things that you're sewing. Are you going to make another uh, anorak? That's just my personal question. <laughs> you know, it's really funny you should ask that because I was thinking of ways that I could stay awake tonight and uh, and I cut another one out. <laughs> oh, you did? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so I'm going to make, um, I cut out the paper cut patterns waiver um, anorak because the Kelly that I made is so warm. I put that thin slated lining in it and it's really, really warm, but it's starting to get a bit the temperature is creeping up here in the UK, but it still rains quite a lot. So I can't, I need a coat. And this is my reasoning in my head. I need a coat to be <laughs> waterproof, but not warm. That is the, that's the criteria that I'm going to film. Okay. <laughs> so I'll be looking forward to that on your YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Talking about kind of um, aspects of fabric. Um, can you maybe tell us one of the fabrics that you found the trickiest to sew over the years? Although I'm sure you've mastered it now, but one that you've had problems with in the past? Um, probably it's not, not so much now because I've kind of got used to it, but slippy fabrics like viscose or um, like silky fabrics that really kind of move around a lot have been a challenge in the past because you know even like at the cutting out stage not even at the sewing stage it's so important to have the fabric like laying flat and not sort of twisted out of shape when you come to cut it out I've made the mistake before of like thinking that you know it's all fine and then I've cut it out and I've got this really wonky pattern piece that's just like <laughs> the fabric's just totally misshapen I'm like how's that even happened and you know it's such it's a challenge even to cut out and then a challenge to sew those kind of fabrics but has got easier with practice um, and then probably the other one that I found quite a challenge was when I made my clear coat the closet case patterns clear coat that was um, about a year and a half ago now I made that one and and it just ended up really thick and bulky in some places like the, the with the seam allowance and at the corners it just ended up really bulky and that was quite a challenge as well but um, but yeah just had to sort of work ways around of like making a little bumper to go behind the foot of the sewing machine so that the yeah. foot was flat and could sew with it all and changing my sewing machine needle so I didn't get skipped stitches and um 
yeah, that's pro that was probably another challenge. But um, but yeah, like we were saying before, you know, all, both of those examples, you just I've learned from them, and now I've just worked out ways to to get around it, and yeah, hopefully I can help other people do the same. Now, we always ask this question. Well, there's two questions I'd like to ask. Um, the first one is, and it may or may not pertain to you, but I have to ask it, printed or PDF? Um, I'm going to say PDF um, because I'm quite an instant kind of person. I like, I like things like when I, when I want something, I like it. I like it right away and then. I mean, I all, I have the added benefit of that I've got a whole shop full of patterns also. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so quite, quite um, but I think that I think the choice and the range of different patterns that are available in PDF now mean that, you know, you'd you'd be crazy not to try them. You'd be just be missing out on so much if you didn't try them. Um, and I, I don't know about you guys in the States, but certainly here in the UK, it's become much easier to get them printed on big sheets. You can, you know, you can do it online and it's really easy and they just send you them. And, you know, if you don't want to do the whole sticking it together at home thing, then you can do that as well. So, yeah, PDF. Yeah, you know, and that's so I'm hearing a lot more before when we first started that question, Dawn, um, it was I was starting to get a little nervous because I'm either way. It doesn't matter, but I'm if, if I want it, I want it right away. And my yeah. local Joann's is notorious for not having the newest patterns. So I've been subjected to move outside of the big four and start looking for things I can get in PDF. But on the show, it seemed predominantly printed because people didn't want to tape. But now it's starting to shift and I'm starting to hear more people are saying PDFs. And it's just, I agree with you. It's just so much easier and quicker to get it and get moving. I mean, you just print it out, tape it up and go. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. Now, the second part of that question I wanted to ask you, and I've asked other uh, people, um, is a two-part question. The first part was, is there any um, absolute favorite project you worked on? Just your absolute favorite. Yeah, the closet case patterns, ginger jeans. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Mine too. <laughs> Mine too. I saw yours. They're really super cool. And you also did a tutorial on how to install the rivets when you make yeah. yours too. I watched that. That was really cool um, that you did that. But yes, that's a great one. And <laughs> with that same question, uh, is there one that you put together and you thought, hmm, what was I thinking? And I'm not going to do that again. Um, do you know, I can't really think of one. Wow. I can't think of one. I, I From what I've seen on your channel, there's none that have been like, oh my gosh, those are awful, like I have. Um, <laughs> but you had a couple that you thought, oh, maybe the neckline's a bit too high and the the Blue is a bit too well, blue I, for me, but I did not no epic fails though. I haven't seen any epic fails. But. No, I've not. I've not had. Oh, I can't. I can't remember the last time I've had like a really big fail. But well, when I made my um my green line Hadley top, it's just it's a bit low for me. I mean, I think it's fine, but I'm just not not used to something that that that's that low. So I always have to wear a scarf with it. So. That's probably one that I'd be like, mm, I don't think I'd make it that low again because I just didn't realize it came up that low. And yeah, but I still wear it. I just wear a scarf with it. It's fine. <laughs> I like that you're not uh, saying, oh, well, those patterns are awful or that's not working. Like even when you have a pattern, you're like, oh, it's just not a neckline I'm used to or it's a bit higher than I like. Um, I think because you can manipulate your um, patterns and you, we see that on your, your uh, blog and also on your videos, you can lower something or shorten yeah, or yeah, whatever sure. that you don't sure. think the pattern is awful. It's wrong. It's you're like, yeah, it just didn't quite suit me. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Now, do you have any, um, oh, what? I hate when that happens. It just flew right away. <laughs> <laughs> um, Yes. Do you have any advice that you would give to any of our um, viewers that are watching right now on 
if they wanted some uh, advice on starting to sew or starting a business, just something specific for them. Um, let's just say for the source, people who are really interested in learning to sew and resourcing great fabrics resources like yourself. Do you have any advice for those people? So people, who, so okay, so people who are beginners and they want to learn how to sew. I, if you've never done any sewing before at all, then I would say it's probably good to like try something that's not clothing for the very first time. Like just make something like a a cushion cover or like a little bag or just something that's something that's flat that's not 3d to start with um but i'm gonna i'm gonna recommend my uh my fellow sewing bee friend here and tilly has got loads of tilly from tilly and the buttons has got loads of good um resources for beginners um so if, you know if you're if you're searching for blogs she's got lots and lots of different things that you can look at um and probably another tip i would give is it can be really overwhelming, I think, when you start sewing because there is so much information out there. So almost like don't look at too much stuff. Like just yeah. just like find a little thing and just do that. You know, the more you look, the more you're going to get overwhelmed and be like, oh, my goodness, how can I ever like and, you know, take on board all of this stuff? And then I would worry that, that would put people off. So just, yeah, just 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 start small, just give it a go don't be scared to try and then yeah you can start to build yourself up from there that's great advice great advice and then once you get your courage up you can go over to her blog and her youtube channel and and get your information because it's great information too and you have a sewing tip for us this evening as well yeah so this is something that um that I learned from somebody who came to one of my workshops um, a few years ago now, and it's really simple, but I think it makes quite a big difference. So um, when you serge your seams together, you always end up with this like little trail of threads at the end, like this little, that's just wibbly bit. And you're like, did I cut that? I mean, what's gonna happen? Like, is it gonna unravel? Like, what even is that thing? Should it be there? So what, of what you can do to just secure it and kind of tuck it back in again is if you get a really um a, a thick needle with a large eye so like a bodkin or a tapestry needle that's blunt at the end but has a large eye and just put all of those threads through it so just treat the little tail like one bit of thread and then just stitch it back into your seam again so that it just pulls that thread back up into the seam and secures it so then you're actually not cutting it off it's not gonna kind of fray or come apart and it's especially useful on seams where um say you did a neckline for example and i really like the neck the neck band technique where you sew the neck band in before you do the second shoulder seam so then when you serge that seam, you then have this tail that's just like, uh, like pulling out. <laughs> so you can just take that tail back up into the seam again and it just makes it look a little bit neater. So yeah, it's quite a simple one, but I think it, it works really well for me. It keeps things nice and neat and tidy. Oh yeah, great tip. That's a fantastic tip. It is true. Like sometimes you're so happy to be done a project that you forget all those little finishing things, yeah. but that will make, definitely make uh, polish your your final product. Yes. Um, we have like eight questions for you. So um, the last thing I'd like to ask is, do you have anything planned for the future you'd like to share with us? Um, right now I don't, <laughs> I don't have anything like imminent that is gonna be coming up. That's like, I don't have any big announcements <laughs> to make. Well, this I'm, birthday party is pretty huge. Yeah, yeah. My, my daughter turned two last week and I feel like it's it's taken me two years to just kind of be like, okay, you know, I can do this. I can like, I can have a family and I can have a business and I can like still be alive. And (laughs) (laughs) so really, I guess my plans for the future to just, you know, keep going and stay afloat and stay, stay passionate about sewing and just keep on 
sharing the love of fabric and <laughs> sewing with everyone. Oh. I mean, I would. There's loads of there's loads of things I would love to do, but I just. I mean, I have dreams. Like I would love, I would love to have my own patterns. I would love to have my own fabrics. I would. I'd love to be. I'd love to have my own TV show. I'd love to. <laughs> and I'd love to have another book. You know, I don't want to do all these things, but. But yeah, there, there. I, I want. I want to have life as well, and I want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we'll see what happens. My eyes are always open to opportunity, right? We'll just see what happens. I'm sure it'll be fabulous. <laughs> and eight questions. Wow, we better get to it or we're going to be here okay. at, you know, well, it'll be midnight for us and like four in the I'll morning do, for I'll you. Be, I'll be quick fire answers. I'll be quick. Okay. <laughs> so the first question is from Rebecca. Thanks for asking right. a question, Rebecca. Do you have a favorite sewing expert that you go to for clothing construction methods or tips? Great question. I'm a huge fan girl of Heather Lou in closet case patterns. She's, I think she's awesome. Me too. She is. She is very, very awesome lady. Yeah. And um, the next question is actually one that I was trying to figure out myself. Is that an Irish accent? And it's from Laurieann Payne. No. It is a Scottish accent. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking it sounds a lot like someone we had on last week. Yes, yeah. Scottish. <laughs> Why is it when someone has an accent, you always want to sound like them? Like all of a sudden it's Scottish. Next question. Let's forget that happened. This is from Lorian. Oh, big fan of Lorian. Lorian says, do you work at the shop or only behind the scenes? Um, mostly be now I mostly work behind the scenes. I do, I do sometimes go into the shop, but, but yeah, most of the time behind the scenes or on social media. Yeah, yeah you're busy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, next question is also from Laurieann Payne. Um, do you work on an industrial sewing machine or domestic? And do you use a serger, overlocker, and a cover, uh, cover hem machine? I use a domestic sewing machine um, and I have I have an overlocker, serger, and I don't have a cover stitch. Well, no, that's not true, actually. We have a cover stitch in the studio that we use for workshops, but I don't, I don't use it because I do most of my sewing at home. So I just, yeah, I just use my machines at home. And uh, next one, again from Lorianne. <laughs> She is lovely. <laughs> Do you sponsor or send fabric to other vlogs like the Stitch Sisters? Um, not on a regular basis. N no, we we quite often send fabrics to magazines. Um, mm -hmm. if they're like making up samples that are going to be in magazines, that's probably the most common thing we do. Yeah. Cool. That's lovely. Okay. Next question is from Lori. How will you pass your love of sewing onto your little girl? Great question. Yeah. Well, I'm kind of hoping that it will be a little bit like how I was exposed to it and that she'll just see me sewing and she'll just be interested in what I'm doing. So so already she, when I'm tracing my patterns or when I'm cutting them out, she'll be like, I want to do patterns. <laughs> she'll, I'll give her like a little bit of the tracing paper and she'll just like cut it with her little scissors and scribble on it and draw on it. Or then I've also taught, she has to be in the right mood, but I've also taught her that she can, she sits in my lap and I've got, I've got the pins in my seam as I'm sewing it and I'll, I can change the setting on my machine to go really slow. So it's just like sewing really slow. And then she'll like take, she'll pull the pin out. I'll say, okay, Aww. pull it out. And then she puts on this little magnetic pin cushion that I've got. She'll be like, and she'll be like, I'm helping mommy. <laughs> <She'll> be like, <laughs> How cute. <laughs> it is adorable. When she was playing um, one of the videos, was it you were making an eye clap? t-shirt yeah, one of the snaps yeah. here and the little arrows yeah and she's playing with the pattern paper i'm like oh my god <laughs> so, 
Um, we also have another question. Lorraine asks, have you talked to Lisa, Lisa Comfort? Um, I believe she's from So Over It. About running a business and spending time with your daughter. I guess, oops, sorry, you could have a, a coffee date kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I have met Lisa quite a few times. Um, just because, you know, we, we like come across each other at different events and that sort of thing. But, I mean... I know I can fit a lot into a day. I don't know how she can do what she does in a day. Her, she's on like a different time scale. She's got like a special clock that makes a day longer. I'm sure she does so much. Yes. Wow. Um, but yeah, I've, n- I've never spoken to her like directly about um, about the balance of family life. I'm sure. I'm sure it's a challenge. I mean, I know it is. I think it's a challenge for everyone. But like, yeah, just one of those things. <laughs> Okay, and uh, next question, Lori Ann Payne again. Do you ever go to Gold Hawk Road to shop and compare fabrics? Um, do you know, I've never actually been to Gold Hawk Road. I do really want to go sometime, but um, I mean, I live quite close to London. And you guys probably think it's like really close, but it's <laughs> I think it's, really <laughs> it's like an hour and a half on the train. Um, wow. But then probably a bit longer actually to get to Gold Hog Road. So um I just don't really have time to like take that much time out right now to go, but I would love to go one day. I've heard so many things about it. Well, great questions. That was our last question so far. Thank you again for participating with that. And Dawn, do we have we can't hear you, Dawn. <laughs> Enough, my phone was going off earlier, so I muted myself so you wouldn't hear it keep ringing. <laughs> and then I answered it. And so I muted myself so you can hear all that just crazy things that happen on live uh, yeah, video. Yes. But I'm just thrilled that all these people um, ask questions. That was very lovely. And remember, for next week's show or other shows, um, you can definitely, if you ask a question down there, just let me know in the comments if you want to pop on and ask the person your question live on air, because we'd love that as well. But yes. Lori, oh my gosh, is Lauren, sorry, it is amazing that you came on because it is so late for you there and it's been great getting to know you a bit better. Um, definitely everyone check out her YouTube channel. It's Lauren Guthrie on YouTube um, as well as the Guthrie and Ghani uh, website. And remember, as always, if you go up in the top of the title underneath the little upside down exclamation mark and you click on it, there's a whole bunch of information. There's links and things to other things to do with our fantastic, amazing guest, Lauren, in this case, as well as on YouTube, down in the description, check out the links because you'll find out more about these people. And we're so thrilled that they came on and supported us. We'd love if you went and visited them as well. Because that'd be Yes. Awesome. Oh, thank Absolutely. you so much for having me. Yeah. So um, we're not sure if you have to jet off because you do have a young child, but it is time yes. for our community news. So if you do, we, we won't blame you at all. And that's fine. No, that's OK. I'm OK. I'm OK. <laughs> So for community news this evening, here we go. This is, seriously, Myra is fabulous. She's so great with spreadsheets and everything. So the first thing we're going to talk about tonight is the Pin It, Sew It event. It's going on. It's on, isn't it, Myra? Mm-hmm. And <laughs> we are, I've um, been lazy. I haven't picked mine out yet, and I got to get to work. Yeah. <laughs> so what is the Pin It, Sew It event, Myra? Can you tell everyone? Well... I think I can. (laughs) If you um, want to join the Pennant Sword event, please visit. We do have a Facebook page. If you want to participate in the Pennant Sword event, all you have to do is um, be inspired by some aspect of a garment that you may see on um, Pinterest. Or um, Dawn, did we decide whether or not if it was in a magazine interest or something like that too, or just? Um, it is, if you find a picture from Pinterest or from, um, Instagram, Instagram, something that just, yes. just, you just think it's cool, whether it's a, a fantastic for a dress or something, you see that something that Lauren has made on her blog right. or, and she's posted on her Pinterest page. Um, we do have the links for that. She's got a great Pinterest page and you think, oh my gosh, I love that pocket that she's done there. Well, you might want to try the pocket like the back yes. of her ginger jeans, the pocket design she did on something totally different, on a bag, on right. some something else you've sewn. It doesn't have to be, I'm gonna recreate right. something that I've seen on Pinterest, but feel free to do that. Um, I've done things where 
I've taken something the way they've done plaid on something I've done on an apron. Um, last year, there was a picture of a dress and it just had a slit from waist down to the hem. And I was like, I'm doing that. And I made a dress. So it, whatever inspiration you use, I think for Myra and I, the fun bit is hearing what your inspiration was and seeing where you took it. So not um, you, it's actually, you only have till the end of the month um, to join the group and post your photo. And then what we do is uh, the following month on uh, May 8th, I can check my calendar there, sorry, Lise, <laughs> on May 8th is the Pin It So It Show. So then you can come on that sewing lab and show off the things that you made. You don't have to. And I have here up on the screen right now some of the amazing sponsors that have agreed to donate something for us. Uh, Megan Nielsen Patterns, Iconic Patterns, Blank Slate Patterns, So How 7 and Indie Sew. And there might even be something else that I'm not mentioning that'll only be around for live viewers who show up. So <laughs> a discount code perhaps, yes. So yeah, it, it's gonna be a lot of fun. We really hope that you guys um, will join us. And remember, we don't wanna add to all the things that you're sewing. There's a lot of hashtags, Lauren, you've probably seen them going around and challenges and things. So if it's something that you've used for another challenge, as long as you used your inspiration from somewhere and then took it somewhere, we are more than happy that you reuse it, double use it. I don't know what you'd call it. Yes, <laughs> yes absolutely. Okay, and goodness me. So that was the first thing on our community news. Yeah. And then I went and closed your slide share there, Myra. <laughs> <laughs> I know, newbie slide user. I should have got you to do it. She's the expert. So we have the Pin It Sewed event. And the next thing we were going to discuss is the sewing makes you love yourself. Now you've probably heard that before, sewing makes you love yourself and wondering why we're bringing it up again. But the ladies of Sewing Makes You Love Yourself, Hattie and Athena, actually gave uh, Myra and I a copy of their latest magazine, the Sewing Makes You Love Yourself magazine. Now, I don't know if you guys have seen it yet, um, but it is a fabulous, like, I can't believe the work that went into this. Um, it is and quite it lovely. It also has some tips from me in there. <laughs> yes, I saw that. Oh, well, yes. I, I you are one of the featured <laughs> presenters. <laughs> it was, I was like looking through it. I'm like, oh my gosh, she's on the show and she's featured in the magazine, as well as the, the, the Stitch Sisters are featured yes. in it too. And they were on the show last <laughs> week. <laughs> Oh, it's uh, kind of funny. So what did you think, Myra? Did you have a chance to look at it? Yes, I got it a couple hours before the show. But Yeah, um, I agree. The first thing I saw was Lauren in here. But yes, it's a really, it's really well put together. It's very nice. And it includes a, a pattern, too, I believe. Uh, wasn't it? Uh, the Yes. Samantha? Yeah, the Samantha I dress. It's awesome. Yeah, it's, I think yes. it's very well put together. Um, very nice book. And, you know, I'm a fan of the Smiley. I actually did a video on um, that as well because I truly believe in that, that sewing does make you love yourself. Oh, yes. And we do have a couple um, photos to share from that. Um, that's why half the time I'm on here, I'm looking sideways. Sorry, guys, it's because I'm trying to load stuff up. So this is Samina, we'll have that information. Um, all that information will be in the information uh, for this. So if you're looking for anything that we reference, in this live stream, it will be in that little, uh, what is it, uh, the upside down eye, <laughs> uh, if you look above your screen, and it will be in the description box when it's replayed on YouTube. Um, I do have to admit, for the live show, sometimes it takes me about 20 minutes after the show to get the information up because sometimes I don't know what we're going to talk about or I know what we're going to talk about, but it takes us places I don't expect. So <laughs> if you give me a teeny minute, but yes, this is the cover. Very cute. I imagine you can recognize the person on the cover. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Coco Wawa Crafts is uh, featured in it. There's so many people featured in it that um, here on that sewing blog that we know, like the lovely Nat Natilda that you guys m must recognize from Natural Dane. She yeah. does a fantastic YouTube channel, as well as we've just had on recently Vivian yeah. from yeah. Stitches and Seam. So this is the Samantha dress. This is the free pattern that comes with it. Yeah. Which, yeah, that's fabulous. It uh, looks like a, a stretch um, wrap around and it has a really cute collar and you can go with or without the collar. And it, um, I've written down the sizes, I believe it's four to, uh oh, gosh me. Um, I thought it was for 24, but I don't wanna say the wrong thing. Four to 28, so that's lovely. It covers quite a size range as well. Yeah, very nice, very, very nice. And yeah, it's got lots of, 
I think really interesting things in that it uh, talks about some patterns that they think are on their radar for this month, some fabrics that they think are on their radar this month, some people, um, great article on uh, how sewing kind of helps yeah. your brain woke you up. And after our discussion last week about menopause and sewing, which I thought was amazing, this also about how sewing actually keeps your brain active and keeps you going and um, keeps you sharp. That was what um, Kathleen in the article said. That was how sewing woke up my brain. But there's yes. fabulous things on there. And of course, Lauren talks about Ponte de Roma. So you can't miss that because really, that was fabulous as well. <laughs> exactly. Now there's a question there that I'm not sure of. I think she may be referring to uh, the uh, Ghani part of Guthrie, but Lauren, uh, Lorianne asked, did I miss out on who Ghani is? <laughs> and I believe that's her husband, isn't it? Yeah, yeah that's right. So my husband's name, my husband name's Ayaz, but his, his surname, my married name is Ghani. My maiden name is Guthrie. Yeah. Um, so I still use my maiden name, but yeah, it's like both of our names together. <laughs> yes. Okay. Although I'm not letting him take credit of running the business now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good woman. <laughs> So, um, yes, it, I, if you wanted to know more about the sewing, sewing makes you love yourself, um, like um, Samina mentioned, I should have said earlier, if you go to smyly.eu, you will see more about that. That's their website. So then they've got their story. Um, you can find out where to find uh, to get the magazine. And it is their first magazine out. And it is 1250 euros. So I don't know what that translates to. Very sorry. I should have looked that up beforehand. Um, but we will definitely put the links in there, people, and they will be in um, uh, on YouTube already. Okay. Um, so, Myra, our next one for the um, doing news. I got to get quicker at putting these things up. Sorry, Myra. That's quite okay. If it's what I think it is. Uh, oh, that's yours. Yes, that's the. Uh Holly Seamwork resource. Um, I just received, uh, I get the newsletter from Seamwork um, and uh, they've got a new resource that you can uh, go to to find out things. And some of it's free, things like, you know, sewing in zippers and things, but it seems like quite an amazing resource that they've kind of pulled together from, I imagine it's a lot from what they've already done and pulling together new things. So definitely go over to Colette's and uh, Colette, the patent, work, uh, patent company and check that out. Okay. And oh, one of our favorite people on the show okay. because she's yeah. just so lovely. And I think this, <laughs> this, this I think because we're running out of time and we want to be mindful of Miss Lauren's time, uh, this would probably be our last one. But that yeah. is kittenish behavior. She's doing her pattern swap. She actually did it last year, and I missed out on it. She's doing it again this year. Um, she just started, and I don't have a slide up for that. But the information, um, she actually did a YouTube video about it, just her recent one is about the pattern swap. And what you need to do is if you're interested in doing it, it sounds like a lot of fun. I watched it um, last year. But if you want to take part, all you have to do is email her with your name, your postal address, your Instagram uh, tag, and a brief description of what you would like to sew and what you would like to try to sew. And then she's going to post all the rules for that. But it's so awesome because it is actually across the globe. It doesn't matter where you are. We're going to be swapping. I could swap with someone in the UK and vice versa. So it sounds like a lot of fun. Um, and if you're interested, just go on over to um, Kittenish Behavior, her YouTube channel, and she has all the information there. And we'll have a link to that particular YouTube video in our description box. <laughs> yes, so, thanks, Moira. You're welcome. Um, Lorianne has been amazing. In the comments, she is telling us that that is seventeen forty nine American dollars for the Sewing Makes You Love Yourself magazine, and twenty two forty four Canadian for the Sewing Makes You Love Yourself magazine. And that it comes with the free pattern. I don't know if I said that enough. It comes with the free pattern, the Samantha pattern. So I mean, that's that's quite neat. I think it's quite interesting that um, it used to be that all the big things came from big sewing companies, for example, the big four, and now it's kind of more grassroots magazines like Sewn uh, Magazine. Um, we had um, Michelle on from that black chick, 
And she was talking about her that sewing magazine, magazine as well as this magazine are coming more from the grassroots kind of thing. So it's a, a very exciting time in the sewing community. Mm -hmm. Now I have to ask, is the um, Smiley magazine just online or is it online and her, uh, magazine, hard copy? As far as I've seen, it's only online. Um, I'll have to ask the ladies, Hattie and Athena, um, if, uh, if it is also in printed, maybe it's going to be in printed in the future, mm -hmm. but um, very cool. Yeah. Okay. Good. So we came three minutes late, but in our defense, we started three minutes late, although maybe that's not in our defense. Maybe that's against us. <laughs> but we were really lucky yes. to have Lauren Hello, on yes. this evening. Thank you, Lauren. Thank, Thank you, you so much. I really appreciate it so much, uh, you stopping in. It's been a pleasure, an honor for me, and I'm sure Dawn too, and everybody else that's out there. Thank you so much for spending a little bit of your time with us. So with that said, Dawn, you have anything else? Just to mention who's on next week. So we have Betsy Cook now. Betsy Cook might not be a name that you've seen lots on YouTube and all over the place, but she is fabulous. She has a great blog and it's called Garmenta, G-A-R-M-E-N-T-A. And what she does is she has pattern services as well as pattern grading. Now, I think right now, a lot of people are thinking about pattern making or wondering why certain things aren't in certain sizes. And she really has a fan, it's fan, points it out fantastically on her blog. And I can't wait to have her on so she can talk about why it is more difficult sometimes to make grading for plus sizes and what are some of the things that are involved and just even grading normal sizes. and. Um, discussing pattern making. Um, so I think it'll be a very kind of a different shift for us and it'll be very cool. So I hope you guys will join us for that. As well as I wanted to say thank you. This week I've had some amazing comments on our YouTube channel, like like mind-bogglingly amazing and on our blog. So Joan, Lori Ann, Sue, Sally, Barb, all those people who make, you know, doing YouTube videos and this show fun. Thank you very much. And everyone who is watching tonight, thank you. We really do yes, appreciate we it. We applaud you. Thank you. Okay. okay. Is that it? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay, everyone. We all are going to leave. We're going to thank Lauren again for blessing us with her presence tonight. And we'd all love to see you next week, Tuesday at 730 for another episode of That Sewing Blab. Good night, everyone. Night. Night, Lauren. Night. <laughs>